right, here we go. Please make sure that you have your platter out. Today, shh, guys, come on. Today is the 6th. Today's the 6th. We're going to write in our planner. We're going to finish the house value sheet. I am going to model for you how to do line of best fit in the calculator and make predictions. That's all this is. I just abbreviate it. You can abbreviate if you want to. Yes, baby. All right. Write your homework in your planner, please. Guys, I have two tu different tutoring groups going on because they just kind of changed it for my tutoring. I was supposed to just be doing math one today, but apparently I am not. I'm also doing math eight for the school. So if you're staying at the school, there'll be two different, completely different groups that will be going on for tutoring. Okay. All right. Shh. I created a help uh, video for the project that will go out to your phone um, or to remind this afternoon. And I'm doing tasks one through four. Please make sure that at least by the end of the week, you have completed task one through four in your project. If you hadn't finished task one through four, you are behind by Friday. Okay. If you haven't, you are behind. Okay. I'm going to, mm, that ain't good. It's due in January when we come back and you should probably try to finish it before you leave. Cause you don't want to do anything over the holidays. I don't. So you need to get to working. Okay, baby. You've had it for three weeks now. All right, here we go. Let's, it's just the homework. Write the homework, baby. You know, the homework is the same every day. All right, take this out. Let's clear our calculator. Second plus seven, one, two. Let's clear everything in the calculator. Second plus seven, all, one, two. Second plus stroll over with the arrow button. All one two. No, I mean not and have it on the progress report, but you can turn it in. Yes. Yeah, I'm not gonna have time to update a progress report tomorrow because I'm printing them probably today. <laughs> it's it's almost impossible. They give you a planning, but not really. You can't get that stuff done. That's why I'm here usually till six, seven. You have any free time out of school? Not during the week, I don't. Shh. All right, here we go. Mm -mm. I mean, it's a rewarding job, but it's also difficult. All right, here we go. This is what it says, okay? Please listen so you can get this done because the other, you're going to do the bottom completely on your own. If you didn't listen, then you're not going to understand how to do the bottom completely on your own. So please make sure that you're listening. Is there anyone that is not ready to continue with this sheet? Is there anyone that's missing this sheet? All right. We, I'm going to clear the calculator again. Second plus seven. I'm going to stroll over to all. One is the only option. Two, reset. If, listen, if you do not understand something, you need to stop me immediately. It, it really kind of does drive me crazy when you wait to the next day to say, oh, I never understood what you said there. After I access like tons of times in class, do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? Please don't lie to me. Just tell me you don't get it when we're doing it so that I can fix it then. Because later on, I got to go back in my mind and remember, well, what did I do? You know what I mean? Just tell me immediately when you don't get it so I can fix it then. Then for me to wreck my brain trying to figure out what is it that you don't understand later. Okay. I mean, I will do it if I have to, but let's save ourselves the trouble and just tell me immediately when you don't get it. Don't wait till later because, you know, it's hard. All right, here we go. 
This is saying use the graphing calculator or the computer program. So you can use Desmos to do this also to create a scatter plot. Okay, so we're going to create a scatter plot on the calculator. All right, it says how we're going to do that. We're comparing two variables. The two variables they want you to compare is the size of the house to the value of the house. Which one is X, Ms. Reyes? Which one is Y? Because it does not say. Your Y is always going to depend on whatever the X is. Your size is not going to depend on the value of the house, but the value of the house is going to depend on the size of the house. The bigger the house, the more expensive the house is. So X is your size, okay? And Y is the value. Y depends on the size of the house. The value of the house, Y, is depending on the size of the house. That's how I know which one's X and which one's Y. Any questions about that? Okay. So now I am going to graph. So I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to type my X values, which is the size of the house, under L1 and the value of the house under L2. Let's quietly type in my X values under L1. And I should have 12 values, okay? I should have 12. I'm going to pause for the calls, okay? Bless you, babe. Can you open the door, babe? Shh. Okay, baby. Bye, baby. Okay, look, this is what we're doing. Let's graph them now. So we are going to go to second Y equals, yellow button Y equals, second Y equals. There are many plots that we can do at the same time. We only want one. Press enter. It selected off. We're going to press it on by pressing enter again. So it goes from off to on. Please check to make sure that now on is highlighted. Sit up, please. Riley, sit up, babe. When you graph this, you do not see any points. Why is it that my points are not showing up? Because it's greater than 10. This is 10, 10, 10, all the way around. So we need to fix the window range. Go to window, please. Okay, we already marked what our smaller numbers were yesterday. The smallest number in the list for X, we're going to make the X axis first, is 800. The highest number on the x-axis needs to be 3,200 at least. So it needs to go from 800 to 3,200. But I need to see 800. If I, if I uh, type in 800, it's going to be on the edge of the screen. So I need a buffer. Okay, let's go a little lower than 800. What's a little lower? So let's do 700. Let's go a little higher than 3,200. 3,300, okay? Questions? Now, if we go up by increments of one, it's a lot of little tiny tick marks. So we need to go up by bigger increments. Okay, 100. All right, let's talk about the y-axis now. Your minimum y-axis, what's the smallest y value? 90, largest. 350, right? 350,000. All right, so now we need something a little smaller than 90. What's a little smaller than 90,000? Let's do 80,000. 
what's a little larger than 350 maybe 360 and we cannot go up if we go up by ones it take us forever to get there what can we go up by Ten thousand. okay perfect now let's graph it x rest stays at one let's graph now we can see the points a little bit better do you see okay so now we have our scatter plot hold it up so i can see it Shh. check your neighbor make sure your neighbor has it Shh. come on camilla y'all struggling back there you and jameson <laughs> all right so you go to second y equals jameson you go here and then you're going to press enter and then you're going to press enter again on own do you have that jameson do you have that camilla okay now did you go to window did you change the window range okay did you press graph do you see your graph Do you see the graph? No, not at all. Camilla, do y'all see the graph? Yes. Thank you. Jesus, take the wheel. All right, now, shh. Any questions? Okay. I need. Shh. This is what it should look like. Okay. This is your scatter plot. Now we are going to use the technology to do the line of it. Or it says, oh, this, the outlier. So we're going to press the trace button and we're going to move the arrow button over till we get to the point that's the outlier. The outlier is this point that's not clustered with the other ones. So I'm going to press the arrow until I can get to that point. The outlier, this one right here, out here. So this outlier is, look at the order pair on the bottom, 3,100 comma 100,000. So my outlier is going to be the 3,100 uh, comma 100,000. Okay, that's my outlier. That's this point that's not clustered with the other points. This is the outlier. Yes. Trace is right beside graph. Trace is right beside graph. Okay, and then you press the arrow over button until you get to that ordered pair, and then the ordered pair values are at the bottom. Next thing, shh, it says use the technology. Now we're going to find the line of best fit, okay? Please listen. So follow me. We're going to go to stat. Your screen should look like this. Please raise your hand. If your screen does not look like my screen, look at your neighbors. Make sure that your neighbors, can you, Hannah, can you come sit up here beside Elizabeth? Make sure that your screen is like mine. Shh. Now we're going to go over to calc. Now we're going to go down to number four, lean red. Please pay attention. Press enter there. We're going to do second one, that's L1. Ooh. We're using our L1 values for X, comma, second two, we're using our L2 values for Y, comma, commas right above the seven, VARS. Okay, VARS is right here. We're going to go over to Y VARS. And we're going to press enter how many times? Three times. Shh. Guys, y'all always do this. Please stop. You're, when you start talking, it throws other people off. Okay? Everybody doesn't move at that pace. And then when I'm going through the steps, some of you are saying the steps before I say it. And you're rushing it when everybody doesn't understand it at that pace. Please stop doing that because we're messing people up, okay? Please stop. All right, so I'm going to do it one more time, okay? Shh. You go to stat. I'm going to clear my screen. Stat. 
You go over to calc. Somebody's still talking. Please stop. Go down to lean reg. Press enter. Simone, you got it? I got L2 quad. You have, what is it that you have? L2 quad reg. You just go, it's number four, baby. Lean reg. Lean mm -hmm. Second one, comma, second two. Simone, you got that? Comma, vars, y vars, enter three times. Vars is right here beside clear. Go over to y vars. Enter three times. All right, that's the equation. So we're going to, it says, write the equation to the nearest whole number. We want whole numbers or integers. So our slope, our A is 73. So this is going to be Y is equal to 73X. And our starting amount or Y intercept is 48,000. 65. So this is plus 48,065. Um, okay. All right. So look, this is what it looks like. The Y is the total amount. What is it the total amount for, Ms. Reyes? It's the total value of the house. Okay. This is total value. I did not know, but okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine, baby. All right. Our X represents the size in square footage. This is the size of the house. Square foot. It's asking for the meaning of slope and the meaning of your Y intercept. Please listen. The formula for slope is y is on the top y2 minus y1 y is on the top hey baby x is on the bottom please write this okay miss reyes what is the meaning of y we said it it's the value of the house so we got value of the house per square foot So what is the meaning of slope, Ms. Reyes? The meaning of slope is value of the house or cost of the house per square foot. Per square foot. Yes. I don't know. I'll just be saying something. All right. What is the y-intercept? Ms. Reyes, the y-intercept means the starting amount. Well, what are they talking about in this problem? They're talking about the cost of houses. So the y-intercept has to be the starting cost of houses. So your b or your y-intercept is the starting cost for houses or for the house. It's the starting cost for a house. Questions, comments, or concerns about how to figure out the slope, first of all. Y over X. Yes. Slope is cost per house. Cost house per square foot. Any other questions? All right, correlation coefficient, that's R. Now we're going to find R. Anybody still writing before we find our correlation coefficient? All right, the first thing we have to do is diagnostic own. Where do we go in the calculator to cut the diagnostic own, Matt? Second zero, catalog. Very good, babe. Second zero. We have to do that first. What are we looking for? Diagnostic, Diagnostic on. Mm -hmm. 
make sure it's diagnostic on and press enter don't just press enter on diagnostic on but actually cut it on by pressing enter again so you have to press enter twice what words do you need to see done, done. if you do not see the words done it did not cut it on questions okay so now after you do this after you do this, now you're going to do like you're doing a line of best fit. So you go back to stat. You go over to calc. You're going to do line of best fit again. So that's number four. And I've already done the L1, all that stuff, put it in blah, 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 blah. So just press enter. I only want my R. My R here is point six about point six six okay so it's a positive point six six what does this say about the scatter plot what kind of correlation is it it is a positive correlation because the number is positive what else do we know about it it is strong because well no it is not strong it's what no it's, 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 it's moderate. It's between 0.75 and 0.5. This is moderate. So it's not strong, but it's not weak. It's in the middle. Okay? Questions? That means that there is a correlation. It's not as strong, but it's a moderate correlation between the value of the house and the square footage okay any questions and it's positive so that means that as x increases as the size of the house increases the value of the house increases questions yes okay that's okay baby all right so now your i need for you to do the second one okay please make sure that you do num this right here these questions the same way i did these you do these it's doing x and y the value of the house stays under the y look leave this alone do not mess with this this is the same go over here i'm gonna clear out l1 watch miss reyes clear it you see how l1 is highlighted I go all the way up to the top, make sure it's highlighted. I clear it, and I press enter. That clears out list one. Don't use delete, just use clear. Delete will get rid of L1 altogether. You don't want to get rid of L1 altogether. Press clear and enter. Okay, and now you're going to type in the age of the house. L1 is the X, so it's the age. Say again, baby. No, because you didn't go all the way up to the top. L1 should be highlighted. You only cleared the first one. Go all the way up to the top, baby. You got it? Go all what? Top. Stat. Enter. Huh? You're still close, baby. Okay. I'm going to pause to give us a chance to get those typed in. Shh. When we finish, we're going to paste this in our notebook on page. This is page 20. Don't forget to make sure you type in the correct ages. Language. What's up, baby? They're just long, they're not high. All right, come on. You should graph it first. Don't forget. What did you choose for your window for your X? 
Because X changed. Huh? Three. Three. And what else? Three to what? To 60. I wouldn't use three. Why would I not use three? Because it will be on the edge of the screen. It is the lowest number. I need something a little lower. Okay, one. Now I'm going to, I can't go up by hundreds. What would I go up by? Ten. Ten, somebody said. You can do ten. That's fine. I probably would do something smaller, maybe five. All right. Keep the Y's the same. Let's graph it. Okay, look at it. This is basically what you should have got. Now let's do the line of best fit. Because it's asking for, use the technology, do line of best fit. Where do I go on my calculator to do line of best fit? Where do I go? What do I press? No. Set. Calc. Line reg, second one, comma, second two, what else? Comma, vars, y bars, enter three times. All right, so now we want these integers uh, as one of the as integers, so no decimals. So we're going to say that our slope is negative 4,000. 220 what? 22. So y is equal to a negative 4,222x. Sorry, I'm bringing it up. We got x. And then my y-intercept is going to be 277,061. So this is plus 277,061. Okay. Now it says describe the slope. The formula for slope is M is equal to Y over X. Y is on the top, X on the bottom. What's the Y meaning of Y in this problem? The value of the house. So you got value or cost of the house per, what's on the bottom? Year. So the meaning of slope, slope is cost of house per what? Year. What is your y-intercept or your b? Your y-intercept or your b? The starting what? Starting, starting what? No. Starting cost. The whole thing is talking about the total cost, is it not? Isn't the whole thing talking about total cost? So th the B has to be the starting cost. So it's the starting cost of houses or house. Any questions? Correlation coefficient. What's my R here? What is my R equal to? Somebody said it. Negative what? Negative 0.7 what? Okay, good. Put your R there. If it's negative 0.7, sorry, negative 0.78, so according to this, this is a what? A strong... Strong correlation, negative. strong negative correlation. And that's really not the truth. As the house gets older, people tend to do upgrades to their homes. So really houses appreciate in value, but this is just a worksheet. Okay. Any questions? All right, this goes on page 20 in your notebook. Please, let's put this on page 20. I'm going to pause to give you a chance. Uh, recreate. We're not recreating anything. Okay, we're going to do line of best fit and making predictions. I have to cover this one because tomorrow 
I have to also do residuals, okay? Uh, we got. I got to get it done. It is what it is, so bear with me. Shh. Put your name at the top of the sheet. If you have extra, put it in the center. Don't bother me. Let's get her done. All right, so first things first. You, are, you have to decide which one is going to be X, your independent, and which one's going to be Y. Y is always the dependent. Y always depend on what X is. The value of Y, that's why it says Y is equal to whatever. The value of Y is depending on whatever X is. So you look at the scenario, which one of these is dependent? The cost of the meal uh, or the tip? The tip depends on how much the meal costs. This is my dependent. So Y is the tip and X is the cost of the meal. The Y is depending on X. So now I'm going to clear my calculator. Second plus seven, one, two. I'm clearing it. Second plus seven, one, two. Second plus seven, one, two. Ready? Come on, let's get ready. We are going to type our X values in L1 and our Y values in L2. That's the way it goes. Come on, hurry, hurry. Y'all are y'all can think about that stuff later. Nobody told you to put that stuff back. Y'all being fast. Shh, come on. Shh. If I go past the bell, it is because you wasted my time, so I'm going to waste yours. I am going to get this problem done if it kills us. We're going to get this done. We're going to go to stat. We're going to press enter on edit. Remember, we're going to type our L values, our X values in L1, our Y values in L2. Okay, so let's quietly type these numbers, these amounts under L1. We should have five values there. The last number should be L1 in parentheses five. That's the fifth number. We're going to move over to list two and quietly type in the tip amounts. It should match up. $4.75 should be with 50 cent so on and so forth. Please make sure it matches up. Raise your hand if you are still typing. Good. Now we're going to do the line of best fit. So we're going to press the stat button. Go over to calc. Number four, lean reg. I don't need to do, I don't need to graph the line, so I'm just going to press enter. So now I'm dealing with money. How many spaces behind the decimal should I have? Two. So since I'm dealing with money, my slope is going to be 16 cent. So this is Y is equal to 16 cent X. And then this is negative 30 cent minus 30 cent. Remember that your slope is is y over x my y here represents the tip this is per cost of meal or per dollar for your meal okay okay what's the expected tip miss reyes if the amount of the meal is ten dollars and fifty cents is $10.50, is that X or is that Y? The, they gave us X. X is the cost of the meal. So X in this problem is equal to 10.50. We're trying to figure out Y, the tip amount. 
for ten dollars and fifty cents. So we substitute. We have y is equal to sixteen cent point sixteen times ten dollars and fifty cent minus the thirty cent. And that will give us the expected tip amount for $10.50. We're using the line of best fit to find a predicted amount. The predicted amount is the expected tip for $10.50. So let's type that in. 16 cent times $10.50 minus 30 cent. What is that amount going to be? 1.63. That's how much money? $1.63. No. $1.38. $1.38. Cent. What you trying though, baby? Maybe you type something in wrong. Look. Check it and see. Okay. Do number two on your own, please. Yep. Do number two on your own, please. Okay. This is X. They already told you why. This goes under L1. This goes under L2. You can clear it. Second plus 712 is the fastest way. And you type in your X and Y values. This is talking about your exam grade and the hours you spent studying. So, of course, this is the hour study and this is the grade. You're going to round it to the nearest whole number because most of the time when a teacher gives you a grade, they don't give you a decimal as a grade. So, let's do whole numbers here. So, what would be the equation for this one? Y is equal to what? 6X plus 64. Okay, you studied for six hours. Is that X or Y? X. This is X. X is equal to six. So you have to figure out what Y is equal to. Expected grade is Y. So you substitute Y is equal to six times what? Six plus what? 64. And what's your expected grade? 100. 100. Okay, see if you can do number three and then put your calculator up. Shh.